in your collection. No one can hear you scream. Here's your look at the Weta Workshop Mini Epics Aliens, Ellen Ripley. Forty years ago, director Ridley Scott's masterpiece of science fiction Alien burst onto the big screen, spawning one of the most iconic film franchises of all time. To celebrate the 40th anniversary of Alien, Weta is thrilled to introduce Ellen Ripley into the mini epics mix. This highly stylized figure stands six inches tall and should be displayed safely away from the huge slimy things. Going to be looking at some more mini epics here on this channel from the folks over at Weta Workshop. Of course, before we get a closer look at Ellen Ripley and a pretty ticked off Jonesy in hand, the first thing we'll have a look at is the product catalog. I'm all about those product catalogs. And inside, actually, there's an image of Ellen Ripley right there. I feel like this image is actually a little bit better than the actual mini epics that we received. Despite that, though, we're going to open up the booklet and kind of give you an idea of the kind of cast of characters that you can get in the mini epics line. Characters ranging from Lord of the Rings, Alita, Men in Black, more Lord of the Rings, Borderlands, more Lord of the Rings, Apex, Ghostbusters, which we just recently had a look at, another Lord of the Rings, and some alien characters along with The Hobbit and Predator. Looking forward to getting that Predator. Uh, I have also picked up, just an FYI, the face hugger, which is technically Kane. I'm surprised they didn't call it Kane, they called it face hugger, but we're going to be looking at those. And then on the back, the other characters available in this first wave. The Xenomorph, which sadly I still have not yet been able to find. It's number one. Face hugger or Kane is number three. And Ellen Ripley is number four. You're asking yourself, well, where's number two? I think number two, I don't know if it's actually listed anywhere here on, on the actual booklet. I think it's an exclusive, and if I can certainly find that, I will be having a look at that also in an upcoming review. Let's move over Ellen Ripley just a little bit. She comes included with a display stand, and this display stand is certainly a lot bigger than the one that came included with the Ghostbusters, which was maybe even about half the size and maybe two-thirds the size. It does still have the pegs, but the pegs are notably one size is a little bit bigger and the size that's over here. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's see, there's the one there, and this one's just a little bit more tinier. So when you are looking to put the figure on the display stand, there is a specific way. You kind of have to have her facing further back on the display stand. That's kind of the telltale sign to tell you which peg goes into which hole. Now, to be fair, though, like with the other mini epics that we've had a look at, Ellen Ripley seems to stand fine on her own. You really don't necessarily need the display stand. I almost even feel in a case like this, judging by how sized of a display stand this actually is, I really don't think you really would want to have it anyways, because it's going to take up a lot of space. Imagine that you have each of the alien figures. Let's, for example, go ahead, go the full extra mile after all and attach her to the display stand. Going to line up the first hole into the peg there. And then we're going to rinse and repeat and do the exact same thing. Oops, on the other side. Let's not drop her in the process. There we go. This one's a little harder. The bigger one is a little harder to kind of get in there. There we go. But as you can see, there she is on the display stand. Now, imagining, if you will, you'll have to use your imagination for this, that you have the face hugger here, right? You have the alien here. Well, you're already asking more space of your shelf because, of course, the display stand, I know we're talking too much about the display stand right now. And I'm sorry for that. But the display stand actually does stick out a little too far on either side. So I'm probably just going to end up ultimately displaying her without the display stand. I mean, again, she fine, she's fine without it. Put that to the side. Let's get a closer look at Ellen Ripley. You know, it, it's a passable enough Ripley, but I feel it lacks something. It could be just simply the case that the, the skin tone is maybe a little too pale for my liking. But I feel like, it, like I said, it's close, but there's something slightly off. One thing I will say to its credit is it does look better when you're looking at face forward than when you're looking at it from the side. I feel like it loses a lot more of Ripley when you're looking at it from the side profile than when you're looking at it from the front. So I think when it comes to displaying her, I'm going to display her facing forward like this. You do see that she does teeter a little bit because one of her feet actually doesn't sit completely flat on the shelf. 
it's going to be lifted up just a little bit. And that little bit is more than enough to have the figure rock back and forth. But it's not going to fall over. It's just going to rock a little bit more when you're moving her around. She has in hand, as we can pick the figure back up again, her torch. And I like the fact that they've actually sculpted the flame on the end of the torch. A nice translucent orange plastic. That's a nice little touch. They could have also even put look, a little bit of a little smoke. You know that little slithering bit of smoke that they always put after a fire in cartoons. I think that could have also worked as well. But, you know, having the little flame, I think, does go a long way to add a little bit of extra life to it. And, of course, one can also not forget the fact that in her other hand, Jonesy looks rather upset, doesn't he? He looks like he's about to take a bath. And if it's anything like my cats, my cats hate taking baths. Jonesy definitely does look... I, I can't even say whether he's actually ticked off at, say, an alien that's standing here, or it almost even looks like he's really ticked off looking up at Ellen Ripley. <laughs> that cat is... I would have just bought that... Uh, just Jonesy on his own looking like that. Can we just release this? This little figurine of Jonesy by, by himself? Even if he's just levitating on a display stand, I would pick him up in a heartbeat. I just I love the design of Jonesy. That's so cool. Uh, as you can see, the way she's holding it, too, they've got the one hand of Ellen right underneath the paw of Jonesy. It kind of looks like her thumb is there, but then the rest of her fingers sort of just vanish. I guess he was slightly of a chubbier cat. That's so, so cool, though. And then, of course, when it comes to the detailing on Ellen Ripley, not just solely her face, but then looking at the rest of the Nostromo outfit that she's wearing, she even has, actually, the patch right there. It says Nostromo. 180286. You can actually even read that. I like that they've exaggerated the sizes of the zippers, too. Look at the size of these things. But it actually works well to the idea of stylizing these characters as statued pieces that you can put on display. Again, she's lanky, but that's kind of like what we've been getting a lot of times already with the Ghostbuster epic minis. They're really lanky, skinny-looking characters. With the way that they've also got the costume draping on them, it really does add a lot of stylized design to it. And of course, you can still see there's the shirt underneath the jumpsuit with, of course, still the green t-shirt. I also like the way that they've done the ringlets there of her curly hair. Again, that stylized design. I don't think there's anything necessarily I would really change to this collectible. It does work really, really well, other than the fact that, like, under certain circumstances, if you see it from some, some of the sides, I don't think, again, that looks much like Ripley. It looks a lot more like Ripley as we turn it around. And again, maybe they could have darkened up the face. Maybe that's where I'm losing a little bit of that Sigourney Weaver likeness. But again, with the epic minis that we've looked at so far, it's sort of like... It's kind of like caricatures, without really overly exaggerating the features on the face. She's not necessarily a caricature. She's certainly, again, like more of an animated design of Ellen Ripley. And again, I, I feel like she works really, really well, especially when you've got her displayed along with the, with the alien, which I've unfortunately yet to pick up. But we also will be looking at, in an upcoming review, Kane, which they're actually calling the facehugger, which is kind of, again, strange. They would call... Clearly, that's Kane with the face hugger on his face, but they're actually calling it the face hugger. They probably should have just released it as a standalone face hugger with a couple of eggs, but I digress. I think the price of admission here is definitely the Jonesy. Again, if they could have only just released Jonesy on his own, I would have picked him up in a heartbeat. But I like the way that Ellen Ripley works out here. She does come together nicely. She's painted well. She does come include, of course, with a display stand, but... In actual fact, again, I don't think these display stands are even really necessary. The figures stand fine on their own. And again, if you're going to be bringing in a display stand anyways, it's going to be taking up much more of a footprint and taking up a lot more space than I think is really necessary when you're displaying these. Of course, in this review, I also avoided the elephant in the room and talking about the price point of these, which I did mention a lot when we had a look at the Ghostbuster Epic Minis. The price point is high on these. Ellen Ripley set me back $42.99. And then, of course, you got to add tax and all that. I think she was probably about $46 when it was all said and done. It's a pretty high price to be asking a collector to go out and start buying these. But I will say, though, they have an interesting look to them that hasn't been mimicked, I feel, from other companies doing sort of that. I don't want to say like the pop collectibles, because that sort of diminishes the value, I feel, of the mini epics here. They're not definitely pops, but they sort of fall into that category of pops. If you're going to be comparing them price to price, these guys are about four times more than what you would be paying for a Funko Pop. But I think they're, I think they're worth it if you don't mind spending the price for them. 
Of course, also listed here on the back, you've got number one, the Xenomorph, the one I still have not yet to find. And again, number three, Facehugger. It's Kane. I'm not getting sure why they called it the face hugger. Either way, though, these are fun collectibles. They should be available right now in comic book stores and specialty stores if you're looking to pick up these for yourself. Today, we were having a look at the mini epics from Weta Workshops, Aliens Ripley. Ellen Ripley, to be exact, with a rather ticked-off Jones. Boy, it looks like he's ready to take a bath. That reminds me, actually, it's coming up to yeah, the beginning of the month. We're going to have to probably think about doing the ba the bathing of the kitties. That's not, that's not going to go well. The look that's on Jones's face right now, that's the same look of the face of the cats when I'm about to give them a bath. You really should bathe your felines, all your pets, really, just to keep them clean and keep all the dirt and all the other stuff off of them, even though cats technically clean themselves. I don't even know why we're, why are we talking about bathing cats? All oh, right, I was the one that started that conversation. Let's change that conversation, certainly, shall we? If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying the content you're seeing, especially this video, make sure, first of all, you hit this video with a like, if, of course, you've enjoyed it. But as well, if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and make sure, yes, you're keeping your papers peeled to this channel because there will, in fact, be more reviews, more mini epic reviews also coming your way in the not-so-distant future. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.